sorry, Josh. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Layer Cake, and I'm here with Neil Bubble. Neil Bubble. There he is. And then uh, we're going to talk about the State of the Union today in Wolf Game here on the Wolf Game Theory. Let's take a look at the standings right now. Uh, looks like there's been some serious movement and shuffling on the top spot. Uh, I believe that it was G Money who came out hot out the gate, took the leaderboard, and was pretty much sitting on top for the first, I would say, 12 hours. Yeah. And then Crypt yeah, yeah. Crypto Corey came in pretty hot right after him. As you can see by the score, he overtook the top position with Panther, whom everybody saw sort of initially um, calculating some sort of strategy whereby, uh, you know, the top two teams didn't seem as though they had one. But, you know, here we are, top three, Crypto Corey, Panther, and G-Money. As we shift over to the hours here, we look at the next move, which is the metric here, and we look at Corey's next move, sitting at the number one spot at 15 hours, followed by Panther, three hours. And then as we look right here in real time, we just got a switch. It looks like Team G Money oh, is moving up the nice. rankings and closing that with about <laughs> a, yeah, <laughs> one hour off of their time. So it looks like six hours. So it's a three hour difference between the two. This is going to be nail biting. About? Yeah, nail biting, nail biting. <laughs> it's getting close now. I can't wait to see first actions. I'm really excited for first actions. I'm even more excited for second second actions because, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, we're both in the same situation where we've uh, bent the knee to J Mon J uh, J <laughs> G Money and J C Z. J Money. J Money. G C Z. G C Z. Might as well just call him at this point. And uh, Chiefer, um. yeah. So. Yeah, that's going to be very, very interesting. Um, what I would love to do, just real quickly, is to give a rundown of how to go about staking. So um, I'm going to just, I'm going to tell you how to go about that. So um, you're going to navigate on your, if it's in browser, there's going to be little dots up in the corner and for a drop down menu. And you want to go to the alpha game. Uh, so if you've kind of picked up wool on the market or you're after buying your sheep, and that sort of thing, uh, that's where you're gonna go, um, alpha game. Then you choose your team. So that's your opinion. We recommend G Money. For the sake of this, I'll just show you how you would go about it by choosing the first place. Then you're gonna scroll right down to the bottom of the page. This will show your wallets, what you have in there, and then you're gonna press stake NFT uh, and you'll have to approve that transaction on MetaMask. With your wool, you have to you put in the amount. I have a lot of wool staked at the moment, as you can see. Um, and then you're going to press stake after you put in the amount you want to stake. Then you'll be prompted to sign a, uh, a contract that is approving wool to uh, as as it's approving the contract to access your wool. And then you'll have to press the stake button again to approve to stake the wool, which will be a lot more expensive of a transaction um, in terms of the first one. But that is how you go about it. Um, then your options, once they're staked, I'll just show you real quick. I am a state with G Money. So when I go down here, I have my assets staked and I the only options are to unstake all wool or I can switch it to another pack, unstake my NFTs, or switch them to another pack. Uh, you can see my stack is uh, accruing there nicely. Uh, not quite as quick as the 10,000 wool a day we did at the start uh, when we were in our first game, but... Uh, <laughs> not sure if we're gonna see those days again. Well, you know, I should, I, I'll take that back. I do think we're gonna see those days again. But I think it'll be because the price of wool is significantly higher and not because of the, drip. the rapid drip yeah. we're going to have. But yeah. It looks very similar to that interface, for sure. You could tell, Absolutely. you know, just from a UI perspective that, you know, they're spending a lot of time on the back end, mm. a lot of time really making sure that this code is solid. And then they're just kind of, you know, kind of recycling and reusing um, the modules 
and uh, overlays that we're getting used to in the game, which is important too. You don't Absolutely. want to necessarily drop a whole new user interface on somebody and be like, okay, now you guys have to learn how to how to work this, you know, module. So, you know, I, I again, another check in the box on you yeah. know, just how sort of smart this team is in, in rolling this thing out. And I know, I know there was a lot of comments around just around the hours versus days and when people drop down. And I wonder, I don't think that's going to be a problem anymore um, because maybe, you know, most teams stay on that under 24 hour mark because um, they're all under the one day now. So we'll see. Um, but I did hear a lot of kind of talking about that um, and people saying, oh, they should change that. But I suppose maybe for the rest of the game, they're not expecting it to be over 24 hours. It was just that initial build up period. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, you know, somewhat semantics to that point. I mean, yeah, with the amount of thing, with the amount of, of variables and numbers that this team is working on right now, I just feel like maybe there's something in the code that that requires it to be counted that way, you mm. know, and, and maybe it's beyond just an aesthetic, you know, or a preference. <clears throat> But yeah, I mean, it's, it's looking good right now, you know, right out the gate. It's, it's again, I don't, I, it's hard for me to really even look at this and, and have a, an in-depth analysis to it because there's so much more that's going to happen in this scenario. I know personally, just because, you know, um, there's a lot of wool yet to be had and a lot wool, a lot of more wool will get to be staked. Uh, I think that a lot of the animals have been staked. I think the numbers that were thrown around for is around 70%. Nice. Right. Do you agree? I mean, I think... I, I, sure I haven't I done the math today. myself yet now. I, I did I, see high 60s, um, a tweet go out. Well, that was a few hours ago. Um, and there's a, a quite a sizable amount of the wool staked as well. Um, wow. Yeah, I'd be curious to know how many people are playing this game from that perspective, the wool perspective. Yeah. Um, because, you know, they're, sacri they're sacrificing a stake because they're not, you know, the animal and wool combination is really what's going to provide the ultimate value in the end, aside from, of course, the, the alpha uh, take. But having, having animals and having wool in the game makes me feel more comfortable and maximizes my return no matter where you know, on the leaderboard, I end up in the end. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, um, yeah, I just brought up the, the, the wool price there on Wolfgang.live. Um, shout out to Scarly. Um, <laughs> and we're looking at 35 cents. It, it was just over 36 there the last time I looked, I think. But uh, yeah, it seems yeah. to kind of stabilize down a bit. We've gone a bit, have a bit of accumulation now, I'd say. Yeah, I think if we're looking at the broad sector, you know, if we t if we you know zoom out and look at the macro, I think that's pretty normal. Absolutely. <laughs> in this, uh, scenario. Yeah, there's a lot of red out there today. What did uh, one of the greatest? Uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? I can't remember. Give me a moment. You can talk, and I'll try to. Recollect <laughs> it. But it was it was an amazing quote. I'll think about it in a second. I don't want to butcher it. That's why I don't. Want to oh say wow! It. Um, oh, that's what it was. That's what it was. Sorry, I got it. He said, the greatest quote I read yesterday was, the time to buy is when there's FUD in the tweets. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. Right, FUD in the tweets. I like, that's a t-shirt right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, the chart, yeah, like it, it really spiked up there an hour ago. Um, and it's, it's back down to 35 now, but uh, there must have been some big buy orders there. I haven't heard from the guys. Yes, yeah, 72,000. That sounds... Oh. Uh, no, 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 that was 72, sorry. Um, There must have been a big buy a while ago, though. That's, that's the thing about what you have to understand is that all the buys that drive the price of this are big. Yeah. You know, people are... They sell a little... But they buy big, and that's a huge indicator because if you're selling a little, that just means you're taking off profit, yeah. and you're still remaining from a large part in the game. So, you know, I I find that as a bullish indicator. If the buys are huge and the sells are small, that means people are are 
are trying to, you know, maximize the best possible outcome for this uh, commodity or equity or this token. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so there was um, a 40.80 buy. It started off with a 17.5 ETH buy, then a 48. Oh, no, sorry, another for 14, then a 48. Oh, that was a sandwich attack. Then there was another 25 ETH buy, another 30 ETH buy. So I reckon that some of the bigger players are stacking up to to stake now, you know, Um. Yeah, for that's it's going to be even some of the smaller ones. Who knows? That's true. Yeah, uh, yeah. I would love to do that. Maybe we can, maybe start a wallet tracker. You know, take all the top dogs and and just have a wallet tracker going on, and uh, we'll be able to get a little bit of insider information as to some of the strategy that's available to us here. You know, and we can just be like, oh, you know, <laughs> there goes Shamdu was a fifteen ETH buy. Um, but yeah, we can look into that later. I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit, uh, what is your strategy or have you even sort of formulated one for your accumulation of wool? Um, let's say you weren't in the game. Let's just say that you were looking at it from the outside and you're like, okay, this wool token looks like it has legs. Let's see what would be, uh, your initial indicator or a buy point or a sell point at this point it's oh it's very hard to know um at the moment for me um i i'm more of a long-term kind of dca type of guy so uh, i will um when i have bits always kind of push put a percentage into a wall because it's kind of my long-term accumulation plan um, mm -hmm. but I have my pouches there so I have my right. nice little drip but at the moment I'm taking out of those pouches to put into the game because and I'm also uh, when the opportunities arise will be picking up wool on dips to again put into the game or to try and get more into the trading on wool but it's very volatile at the moment with these high high pumps and then right. it dumps right down but if you're watching the charts you can take advantage of that if you're holding right. a nice little stack and like even we look at the chart here it uh went from 35 cent and um, it went up to 50 you know if you caught that on the way up you can buy that <laughs> buy back in at 35 cent where it is now you know, it actually went from 30 cent all in that one candle, but the volume was massive and stuff. But if they're buying, you can sell to them knowing that you have the time to wait to then right. DCA in that amount that you sold again. Um, right. And you'll be up, you'll be up on wool, you know, that way. But um, right. it takes time, it takes practice, learning. But uh, I advise people to really get involved in the discords and the voice, voice chats because um, the people the people in these are a wealth of knowledge. There's just, they're they're incredible like um and the fact that everyone's having such a good time and then they're sharing the knowledge and stuff it's just brilliant yeah i mean you know i'm or we i should say are on probably on the team of the person who i would say in jay steezy has offered me the greatest advice when it comes to wool and when it comes to purchasing um he has tremendous uh insight into those sorts of things he's been trading for a long time he's been in and out of various positions uh and i think that from an outsider's perspective if they take a little time and if they don't want to necessarily play the game which is silly because you know if you are going to buy wool, buy wool you want to stake it in this game because it's a win-win but if you were to just want to get in and out of wool you know play the volatility and play the game you could follow along the game yeah yeah and well, and, and i think even even for yeah. traders do you know um that are looking at nfts like we have we have a lot of traders that this was their first nft like it was the fact that yes. they produced a token that they could trade they like to trade and that's where the kind of crossover has happened in this game where there's an education both ways because i've seen the traders come in and then i've seen them go and buy nfts based off 
what the people who know NFTs have been buying and then vice versa, they've started to buy coins and yeah. there's that knowledge share base happening, which like it's it's brilliant, you know. I think me and you are both aware of uh, both sides of it and kind of came into NFTs through crypto. But um, not to forget, there, there's a massive amount of people who their first experience with crypto was actually NFTs. And the only reason they bought a crypto was to buy an NFT. I think that, you know, it's you know it's funny to say, and this comes from me being an American uh, in sports betting and whatnot. Uh, the first thing I thought about when this game was unveiled, when we saw the interface and we saw, you know, everything in the leaderboard, first thing in my mind was, okay, who's starting the betting site? Because there's a site or there's an idea out there. There's an off track betting idea where you can go, you can bet wool on the outcome of a day, an hour, a week, you know? And so you can put your money on these teams and you can, you can really play it a totally different way. And I think that you can kind of have that mindset and I'm not condoning gambling in any way uh, with cryptocurrency. But what I'm saying is you can go at reading the wool chart and sort of applying that, you know, uh, overlay on top of it or that filter and say, okay, so I'm going to follow this game and I'm going to bet with this team and I'm going to see how the price reacts when teams accumulate wool and, and what goes on and that, and then kind of play the market that way. And I think that would be a wonderful sort of, uh, fun way to play it from the outside. You know, yeah. Without having yeah. To stick. I agree. So, and I'm just waiting. I mean, this community never ceases to amaze me, the innovation that comes out of it. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm always a day late with the idea. And all of a sudden, <laughs> someone, someone has a fully built, you know, website and module. And, you know, I'm waiting for the mobile app to come out. And, you know, it's going to be great. I mean, if someone can create a mobile, you know, version of this that's, you know, readable, I think that that would be huge as well. You know, oh, as, as yeah. A, yeah, you know that's that's where the most eyes are going to get, and I think if you're listening out there, all of you tech brain people that are in Wolf Game and love to to build fun little nifty tools, if you want to build a tool that can make this accessible on a mobile phone, I think uh, you'd be rolling in wool by the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my advice. To For sure. Um, yeah, and just thinking about the utility for wool, I have heard people mention accepting wool as um <laughs> for for items like or for, for NFTs, and you know, like that's um that that's very interesting concept to to hear coming. Um, I guess we'll go on and have a look at the old Twitter and just run through a few of the last tweets and have a look at those yeah. sexy gifts that the shepherd yeah. keeps giving us. Um, I like that one. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, Alpha game is open for all players. We were waiting for this one for a long, long time. But uh, yeah, that's a sweet gift there now. Um, it's all just so it. amazing how we go from this really fierce adversarial relationship where, you know, we had these wolves before this game sort of breaking off and trying to form their own discords of wolves only. And we had this divisive relationship and now we're all just rolling together you know yeah. i love that i think that's and for how long i guess <laughs> right exactly yeah. I mean, yeah. in the end you know those wolves up there they uh they're taking the bigger piece of the pie yeah. so. oh look at that gold wolf Who, who's he behind oh um yeah so that was just the run-up letting us know this was another very cool one um oh yeah at the, for the wolf white that. moon and uh, i think that's gonna they're all howling up at the moon yeah that was uh the sky is awesome it is isn't it there's that purple color again everyone remember the yeah the speculation around the the gift the last one that had that purple color was the to the land of risk and high risk and reward. Everyone thought that that was a dead clue that we were going to a uh, layer two. Was it uh, a Matic uh, because of the purple? Yeah, yeah. Matic with the purple, right? Yeah, here exactly. I find it here. Like, uh, Actually, it, we'll go down and then we'll, we'll scroll up from there because um, we might as well go through the gifts and kind of uh, the yeah, there, there it is. There, 
Yeah, there it is. That's the one. You see the same gradient too, as you can see. Yeah. As the sky. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, I mean, that's where we're off to, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, off to alert two at some stage. That is the, the plan. Um, when you stake your sheep and wolves, they will pay a visit to the lands of high stakes and high rewards. Um, but uh, that was the hint, yeah, was that it was something to do with the migration. Um, that was our happy new year. And then this was... Uh, this is the... the oh, displaying yeah, the alpha the alpha scores that uh, there's a pecking order to the wolves um, and just kind of making that very obvious. And then here we go. Whose wolf is that? Just, just so amazing how they just drop those hints that in hindsight are just so obvious. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's pretty cool, all right. And um, yeah, here's the Sheep Olympics that I, I, I have that big theory that uh, we'll get to kind of... Um, play some games during this alpha game that the sheeps are going to have a part to to kind of play because you know that was the alpha kind of saying that 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 they're first so this is the next one is going to be some sort of sheep aspect because all along i've been saying the wolves do the wolves do something then the sheep do something and then it's wolves versus sheep at the end you know and you're still just not you're not trusting that that kumbaya vibe we're feeling. No, you're 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 uneasy. Not uneasy, but you're you're not getting comfortable. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, I'm still... start I'm starting. I think that I think we're going to be given a choice where there'll be a benefit for the sheep to switch team. You know. Um. Ah, so you won't you won't lose your your stake if you leave. Maybe. Maybe, oh, but then if that's it. yeah, could be it, or maybe maybe it increases it. I don't know, but um, yeah. So we'll move on up anyway. If there's if that's that's the next big thing. I think is this this gif is the next big hint. Um, then we've seen that one already. Um, this was just a demonstration of the wool, but that's from the kind of breeding game back at the start. Which, right, yeah, which I just want to tell people, if they don't know, that that is finished and we are now on a new contract and we're we're rolling on in Wolf Game into Alpha Game, which will lead into the main game from what we believe. Um, but in terms of the kind of white paper one that's on the website, that's obsolete at the moment. It's interesting to read, to kind of see the dynamics of the game and I highly recommend we will go through that at some stage. We'll go back and kind of do... A legacy episode where we go through stuff yeah. but um deep dive yeah yeah um but uh for the moment uh yeah to concentrate on alpha game and thinking towards the future of the, the the rollout of the big game with farmers and land um who knows what clues will on earth as if we go back well here here here's one now that from the 6th of january we will burn billion millions of wool together on friday Oh, that was back at the last auction, which was auction. that was some fun. I think I think we should definitely try and live stream the next little auction, um, or at least record it down and kind of watch it together on, on stream. Yeah. You know, oh, absolutely. Uh, but absolutely, that's that's where you know. I mean, if if we're gonna if 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 we as the community are gonna you know uh, scribe some lore, that could be where the rift. Between Steezy and Chloe began. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That could be it. That could be it. That's the moment you know, right we there. Don't know. Yeah. We don't know how this is going to work out in the end, but that could be the moment where, you know, what was that? The Red Wedding? That's yeah, the, the Red Wedding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in his words, you are the only person in the galaxy, in the universe, who will own own this relic right here set your sights on the lots below that was some fun it really was he's some character and we're gonna see him again he said he he's promised that um and then this is where i think it's the sheep versus wolves you know well i mean this could this is before the game so what i'm wondering is 
this is the sheep choosing their next move, right? So they're choosing their move and they're worried that the alpha eight, because that's an alpha eight, right? That's that's taking them. Yeah, yeah. Correct, yes. Yeah. So they're, they have an alpha eight. They're worried about the alpha eight taking them to another team, perhaps. So perhaps maybe there'll be some stealing going on between teams. Oh. So if they don't make the right move, then perhaps maybe... So you could steal, steal sheep. Because that was always given, right? That was always something in the code. The stealing of NFTs was a, was marked as a monumental um, innovation. Yeah, yeah, in NFTs. for sure. Yeah. And so that was the initial sort of like, whoa, this is something special. An NFT that can steal another NFT. This is amazing. And then born out of that was the innovation of the pouch, actually, which is kind of like pretty, pretty amazing. One of those scientific discoveries that comes out of another one, you know? Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Um, for sure. Um, yeah, that's, that's me. That's how I'm feeling at the moment as a sheep. Yeah. Um, worried about the the possibility that the wolves will uh, not look after us. Well, perhaps maybe even like if you, you know, the whole thing with Risky Game originally before the exploit was that if you un when you unstake your sheep, that is when you are most vulnerable to theft or uh, abduction, right? As a yeah. sheep. So maybe when you un if you choose to unstake because I believe this game and it's written in the code again for all you coders if you don't have, if you're not a coder get a coder friend and look through the code of the game it's there for us to look through it it is very much emphasized loyalty yes so when you're staking if you stake stake where you're going to stay you try to shift around that risky game aspect that stealing that theft it's gonna get you gonna i think so you. too oh, yeah i i think i think unless the shepherd states otherwise um i think that loyalty is going to be important within the alpha game uh, he always rewards loyalty yeah yeah he does what's this one so this is the one when he announced that the Alpha 8s were going to do something. And that was some buzz, wasn't it? Oh, <laughs> we were like, what is going on? He asked them all to contact him in his Twitter DMs. And uh, I, I remember that I was, I was actually on, I was on, the, on the calls with everybody in the Discord when, uh, when that tweet came out. And uh, there was a lot of excitement. There really was a lot. Yeah, that was a cool gift, but it was still, it wasn't, it was not, we didn't know yet. No, no, we didn't. Still, we it didn't. was still like, but there was something that was like, okay, yeah. something big, there's some, there's some trust happening. I, th I think we might need an L, uh, fireplace and some, uh, for some uh, shells of wool for our little studio down here. What do you think? <laughs> down here. Down here. Looks like what I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's a comfy chair, all right, yeah. Um, and here we have the flags, yeah. And that's uh, that was that's Corey's, is it or? Right, and um, it's his wolf. Do you think that there is, you know, just kind of looking at this right now? Do you think that there, you know, we? Let's see how I want to begin this question. We look at the gifts and we look at the subtleties of them and how there really isn't much without a meaning. Do you believe that there's meaning behind choosing Corey's wolf to speak? Oh. Do you believe that? I mean, I you know, again, I'm I'm on the I, I don't know. I think I think the that. I think the ones he's used have been random, but I don't know because he's kind of nearly included one in each um gif, you know that way? Um, it's a different, right. like it's it's a different alpha in this gif, right. um, and that's a cool alpha. <laughs> yeah, the the glasses. Like yeah, it, so. um, and then we have the sheep locking away their wool. Yeah, 
Look at the vault. I I miss the sparkling little wolves up in the corner. <laughs> in the gold one. Yeah, I miss them. Yeah. Um, Look at this. And then who's this? So that looks like and is that another one of Corey's? Is that his other one? Maybe yeah. And then here we have all the alphas and everybody joined up together and the sheep's playing the trumpets. I thought that was hilarious. That's funny. Yeah. And so what was, what did they say? What was, uh, said time will, you could probably read it better. Than yeah, time will tell who is the alpha of all alphas. And uh, that was the release of the white paper, um, okay. which everyone should check out. It's, uh, if, if it's a bit confusing, um, you know, you can jump on the voice chat in the Discord and some people will give you a little help out for sure. But uh, that's back where we kind of started then, uh, just posted about the bug bounty and stuff. But uh, yeah, I think that was a great L recap for today. What do you think? I do too. I think that's wonderful. And I think that, again, I think it's my personal opinion. It's a little too early to tell. I think we've got a lot more game to play. And I think we went over a lot of those scenarios and possibilities today. Um, I look forward to seeing this leaderboard change quite a bit. So let's... Oh, two hours. Look. look at that. Look at that. Two look hours that. for we Panther. And again, look at those numbers. They're so close. They are. So close. Yeah. And it's just like, it's, you just can't help but think like these strategies are all starting to sort of meld together and who's looking at the other team. And, you know, it's just very exciting. So I'm yeah. happy and uh, I had a great time today. No, thanks so much. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, and we'll do it again, hopefully tomorrow.